Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. Today on the bait school, we are looking at how to rig and fish a flesh bait. And this time around, we are looking at how to rig and fish a gar. Okay, so our gar fish is a species of fish that we can catch ourselves if we want to. So you'll often see guys fishing with a, a small float and tiny hooks, and on those tiny hooks they'll have bread or dough or a little piece of prawn, and they'll burly the gar up with bread or prawns and sand sort of mix, stir the gar up, and then they'll catch them on that little float rig, and they're great fun to catch, awesome fun for the kids. So stay tuned to our dough bait video, and we're gonna get our dough baits and go and catch ourselves some gar for bait. These ones I have picked up from the shop though, so you'll find readily available is gar fish, either fresh or frozen. Fresh is best, I always say I love fresh fish flesh because it will hold together a bit better than the frozen stuff. However, caught plenty of fish on frozen baits as well, so don't be afraid to get your gar frozen. <clears throat> In future episodes, we will also look at how to rig strips of gar flesh and how to rig whole gar fish. But today, we're just gonna focus on gar as a flesh bait. So the first thing we need to do with our gar, I'll move my other couple of gar out of the way. We are gonna prep our gar fish for fishing tomorrow. So I've got my container here and I'm going to chop the gar up, ready to go, put that in the fridge. It'll be nice and fresh still. And tomorrow we'll catch ourselves a brim or a flatty or a tailor, lots of species will eat a flesh bait. So the first thing with our gar, this guy has no scales on him. If your gar has scales on, you wanna knock those scales off. I like to take the scales off so that the scales don't catch on the point of the hook and foul up so that you can't hook the fish. So I generally like to take those scales off the flesh baits, whether it's gar, whether it's mullet or other flesh baits that I'm using. So we will grab our knife and we're gonna fillet our garfish. So people are going, oh, I might just eat that garfish. And it is a very popular eating fish as well, but it's a great bait as well, nice and firm white meat. So to fillet our gar, we're just gonna come in behind the fin at the top there. And we're just gonna basically run our knife down the backbone of the gar. I can feel that knife bumping the backbone. We're just gonna hold that fish and run our knife down the backbone of the fish, right down to the tail. And basically what we've done there is we've lifted a fillet off that gar. So one gar fillet ready to chop up for bait. And we can just work our way through our gar, chop them up and put them in our dish here. So I'll put that to the side and I'll show you what I'm doing here with this gar. So basically I'm going to cut the gar across into chunks. I want a nice bite sized chunk that a big brim can pick up and eat or it's a nice little snack for a flathead or tailor. So I'll take my fillet and I'm basically just gonna cut the fillet. I like to cut it across on a little bit of an angle and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm just cutting it into nice bite-sized pieces. You can see there that's a nice bite-sized piece of gar. A really good size for a brimbo. You can go bigger and a bigger hook if you want a, a big flesh bait for, for a, a flathead or a tailor. And we'll talk about rigging it whole and also now this tail bit, what I do with the tail section here, is I'll generally split it down the middle and that gives me two nice baits. So I'll split it down there and I'll have two flesh baits there. So go down the centre there, i split that in half. It's a nice sharp knife for doing that. So there you go, I've got those two tail pieces there. And then I've got these nice chunks of flesh bait. You can see that's beautiful white meat on that gar. I can then take my gar bits and drop them into my dish ready to go. So I'm ready to go catch a brim tomorrow. Now, flesh baits, I like to fish a bait holder hook uh, or a, you know, a suicide hook is a good hook. Just have a look for a hook that you think is the right size for the target species. Most of the time for general river and estuary fishing, I'm fishing a size 6421 is about as big as I go. Some people will go up in a 1 and bigger depending on target species and your size of your bait. But a good starting point is around a size 421 as, as a general rule. So with my flesh bait here, looking at my hook here, I'm probably gonna go through this bait about four times. So the trick is I wanna end up with my hook point out through the fleshy side of the bait. So if I'm gonna go four times, I wanna go in through the soft flesh and out through the skin. 
then back through the skin and repeat that twice and my hook point will end up pointing out through the nice soft meaty bit that the fish wants to eat. So let's have a look at that. So we're going to go in through the flesh, out through the skin, turn it around, go again and we're going to go out through the flesh this time. Then we're going to squeeze it in again one more time there out through the skin and then we're going to spin it around for our final time and we're going to punch it in through the skin and out through the flesh. So our, our hook point is in that nice fleshy bit there. So you can see that hangs pretty nice. The reason I cut it on an angle, I get a nice tapered piece at the top here. I can, I can put a half hitch around that if I want to, but it also I find helps the bait not to spin. If you cut it just straight across the fillet and you've got a flat end at each end, it creates water resistant and the bait, water resistance the bait wants to spin a bit more. I find if I cut it on an angle across the fillet, I've got a pointed end at this end, which stops it spinning as much. And also I can tie a half hitch if I want to. And then down the bottom here, I end up, it tapers down to a nice point as well, which is encourages the fish to come and just eat that bit and suck that bit in of the bait. So you can see there, that's a beautiful, that's on a, a long bait holder hook. And that's a nice gar bait for flatty, brim, tailor, stack of different species, love a nice fresh flesh bait. You can see there our hook is, that's the skin side there, and our point is on that flesh side there where they're going to want to eat. They want to eat that nice and juicy flesh side. So there you go. That's our gar. A great eating fish if you want to catch a feed to eat. Remember to check your local regulations on using the fish as a bait and also catching it for a feed. But that is a gar fish, a deadly bait as a flesh bait, hole or strips. Stay tuned for those videos. But at the moment, we're going to go and get this guy. We've got our nice tub of gar flesh here. We're going to get out there and we're going to catch ourselves something for dinner on this gar bait. Fish on. All right, folks, we've got our tub of gar flesh. I've brought a bloke with me to help me catch a few this morning. My dad, who taught me how to do a lot of the bait fishing that I've been teaching you guys. So we've got our gar fish. We're just going to put out a couple of rods and we're going to see if we can get ourselves a brim or a flatty. All right, here we go. We've got a couple of different sinker weights on this morning just to see what will work. So this is quite a heavy sinker on this one. Help hold it in the current. We've got to run out tight. We'll just lob that out there and that'll settle pretty much straight out from the rod. <clears throat> we're just watching that rod tip. You can see the bites on that rod tip, but we want that to go down. We want that fish to get that bait in its mouth. He's just playing with it. If you find the fish are just playing with it and you're getting lots of bites, but you can't hook them, what you can do is you can either let out a little bit of line or you can slowly lift the rod tip and draw the bait away from them a little bit to try and make them commit a bit more. So I'll move that bait away from him slightly and just see if he gets more aggressive. He might want to eat it before it disappears. Doesn't feel real big though. I'm just holding one finger on the line here so I can feel the bites through my finger. I can feel the bites there and I'm also just watching that rod tip. When I lift the rod and set the hook, if it goes down, my, that line will just come away. I'll let, my, let the line drop off my finger. But that way I can, I can feel a bit more sensitive here. I can feel that bite and I'm watching that tip. He's really just playing with it though, this guy. Sometimes when they're like that, it's good just to put the rod back down again as well. Just give them some time with the bait. All right, hopefully this bloke gets a little bit more serious than the other one. This is that nine foot barbarian. Really nice bait rod for land-based fishing. Good in the boat as well. That nine foot length's not too long, but it gives you that nice bend, nice soft tip. 
board for landing fish around structure and that sort of thing if you're fishing land based. And good for a nice long cast as well. Come on buddy. Tried dropping him a little bit of line so I'm giving this one a little bit of line. I took a little bit of line away from that last one so this one I'm giving him a little bit of line. What that can do is your sinker might be anchored in the sand, so by letting out a little bit of line, it allows your swivel to move away from the sinker and your bait to move further away from the sinker. You can just free it up a little bit more and let that fish eat it. Oh, look at that sand crab. Oh, was that? Yeah. I'll give him this bit of bait. He'll be stoked. That one's getting ready to come on. You take that down and we're going to get you. Down you go. Next time that's down, we're going to hit this one. Oh, we nearly went. <laughs> Come on, here we go. Walk forward a little. Give it a little bit of line. What are we? I'm hoping it's a flatty and not a stingray. <laughs> That was just playing with that bait. You could see it taking it down, taking it down. So what I did was I just walked forward and I gave it a little bit of line so that it could really get the bait down. I'm over that other one, over the other rod. Do you want to just grab that rod up? And just drop the tip. That's it. All right. Looks like not a bad brimbo. So that's that gar flesh. We just sit it out there. We let those fish take it down, take it down, take it down. We want that rod tip to bend. Once we get the bend in that rod tip, that means the fish has got the bait down, and that's a nice brim. Have a look at that thing. That's a cracker brim. There you go. Not a bad one, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see that gar in the mouth there, and it's scoffed that bait down. So that's. We've been patient. We've had lots of little fellas. Oh, we got one. Good health. There we go, guys. Not a bad one. That's on the gar flesh. You can see the gar there in the corner of the mouth. So I was just watching that rod tip as it went bounce down, down, down. When it got a bit more serious, just lifted that rod tip and set that hook. So that is a great brim. Seeing as I brought my dad with me today, we might put that one in the bucket, I reckon. He can have that one for dinner. There you go, fish on.